It's here, the Tesla Model 3. I was down at the Hawthorne unveiling event. I got a ride in one. I'm gonna give you all the details plus my first-hand experience in the new Tesla. Let's get the details out of the way. It's the new Tesla that is gonna be coming out in about two years or so, uh, late 2017. So the end of next year is their target. A little bit smaller than the Model S, it, but it looks a lot like the Model S. I was surprised and everybody I think was pleasantly surprised because the Model S is a pretty good looking car. For, th for the base price, these are all like, like minimum specs for the lowest entry level version of this vehicle. It's gonna have 215 mile uh, range on a charge. It's gonna go zero to 60 in less than six seconds. Five star crash test safety rating on all categories autopilot safety features on and capable of autopilot. So that means they're probably going to charge more for whatever version of autopilot ends up on the Model 3. And it's also going to have supercharging enabled. I think that's what everybody was wanting. <laughs> Some really interesting stuff. It's uh, faster than the entry level BMW 3 Series and their Mercedes uh, Benz C Class. It's kind of cool for the price of the Model 3. The roof on it is an almost continuous sheet of glass that stretches from the front of the car to the rear and it, it's it is pretty cool i was riding in the back and you, sure enough you can like see all over the place there are two um bars in that kind of make it seem like a normal windshield and like a really big pano roof on a model s but it's it's not a convertible or a you know a large moon or sunroof they it's just a so solid sheet of glass but it, they say it gives you a little bit more headroom they moved the seats forward a little bit in the front to give more room in the back and i was riding in the back and it was it was pretty comfortable and it had pocket holders and uh, there was more cup holders a lot of things people complain about in the model s there's two cup holders in the model s and no pockets <laughs> like anywhere in the doors or behind the seats um, they're there on the model 3. the model 3 has a 15 inch horizontal lcd display in the center console and it doesn't have a dash like for the driver which is very unusual and a lot of people are kind of complaining about it online but elon says and he had this massive tweet storm um just on saturday here <laughs> that it'll all make sense in part two of the unveiling which means it's, there's probably going to be some kind of cool like heads up display in the windshield or because of the ne next level autopilot maybe it won't matter so much um you won't have to focus on it all the time because I mean, even right now with the current autopilot and the S, it keeps track of the speed, it slows down, it stops. It, if you're on a highway, it, I mean, it's, it is driving itself. I mean, you gotta keep your hands on the wheel and pay attention for like debris or if the weather conditions get weird or very few things, like 97% of it's like driving itself. So that's interesting. Uh, boy, a lot, lot of really interesting stuff about the Model 3. Uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's going to be a mix of lightweight aluminum and some cheaper steel. Uh, primarily steel, I guess, is what they're saying. In the test drive that I went on, the, the guy that was giving us the ride, he was saying that the interior was actually like the finished product. This is what they're planning on releasing. So it'll be interesting to see if they integrate that LCD more into the dash or if it's going to be set out like it is currently really good news for tesla they were expecting like maybe eight or ten people maybe 20 people show up to pre-order on april 31st there were lines in the hundreds and even the thousand uh thousands in some areas i believe i know the line i was in was over a thousand because i went over to the pasadena store to reserve a model three and i waited in line for like three or four three or four hours, not, not terribly long, but it was a long line. They were processing everybody really quick. Um, there was like camera crews everywhere. <laughs> it was kind of cool. They were like, wow, what are you standing in line for? And this is before anybody even seen the Model 3. This was earlier in the day. And the really cool thing that Elon was saying that <laughs> they already had 115,000 uh, pre-orders before they had even shown the car. This is, this is before you revealed it. So they, they, they already like more than doubled the amount they were expecting before they even showed the car off. And as of Saturday, they have over a quarter million. Um, there, I think it was closer to 300,000 uh, now it's Sunday. So they're, 
they, they, <laughs> Elon was saying uh, they're going to have to change their production plans because <laughs> they got way more vehicles to produce than they were originally thinking. Um, in the first 24 hours, it was 100, 180 pre-orders. So the, if the selling price on average, if you, if you mix the people that want to get the ludicrous or the, the all-wheel drive version, you know, it, it's probably going to be around 42000 per car. So at just in the 24 hour period, they made $7.5 billion in one day. So that looks really good for Tesla. That means they can, uh, I mean, they already raised a bunch of money from the pre-orders. They can put that into the infrastructure right away, but they can kind of accelerate their gigafactory, start the other gigafactory, whatever they need to make all these cars. Cause they're having to make at least double or triple or quadruple the cars. It, it's only been a few days. So <laughs> it's cool. Um, they also said that they were going to double the supercharger network in the next two years. And they spent, uh, I think, a little over three years building it up to the point that it's already at. So, I mean, not only are they going to double the size of it, they're going to have to, like, triple the rate of producing these um, superchargers. And they are going to triple the destination charger network, which is really cool because the destination chargers are the ones that are, like, at hotels and restaurants and places where you park your car overnight. Good news all around, uh, I, people are a little bit worried <laughs> that all these Model 3s are going to make uh, queues having to wait for superchargers. I think, I think they, they, they got some smart things figured out. They announced that they're going to be doing a valet um, during like busy times at larger cities where they're going to you know, pull people in and park them up to charge and then move the cars for them. That way it'll be, it'll be free for you know, whoever needs them. They're probably going to be increasing the stalls. Uh, the new supercharger cables that are water-cooled might be able to charge at a higher rate with the newer type of batteries that may be coming in the Model 3 or the newer Model S's and X's that come out in a couple years. Very exciting stuff. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comments below. Do you like the look of this new Model 3? Uh, it, I mean, it's essentially a, a smaller Model S. The, the, the main differences are like, well, besides the volume of it being smaller, <clears throat> is the trunk is a real trunk. It's not a hatchback anymore. So I really like the hatchback. Um, some people like trunks. It, it, it's, I think there's a little bit less utility, but whatever they can do to make the, the a lower cost Tesla, the, the better, I think. The center console not, not being portrait, but in the landscape mode is kind of weird, but we'll see what they end up doing with that. Whew, I'm just really excited. This is cool news. Uh, boy, I... I, I if you were following me, I did some live streaming. And I'm sorry I got a cough in the video where I'm doing the live streaming. And there's just, there's so many comments, I can't even read them. I had like dozens of pages of comments um, just from lunch until I recorded this video. And I, I can't, haven't been able to read them all. And I'm sorry. Normally I try and respond to like nearly all of the comments in my videos, but it's just, it's been crazy. But if you want to check those live streams out, they're, they're still in the channel. Uh, subscribe to teslatrip.com or you can just br browse to the channel and look at them. Uh, they are waiting in line, but it's a cool line. Uh, they got some good music and you can kind of see the car coming by and how the door handles work when you get out. It's interesting. There's a mechanical door handle on the Model 3 where you push it in and it kind of pops out, but it still goes flush when you close it. So that's kind of cool because it's not auto presenting like the Model S, but I'm sure they did that to lower costs and um, failure because that is one of the number one failing components on the Model S. I had to have mine replaced on one of the doors. So I can imagine when you've got, you know, millions of these cars eventually on the road, they want to make sure every single part is like going to last for hundreds of thousands of miles. <laughs> um, man, what was the other good news? Tons, tons of good news. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're also going to be doubling the Tesla stores worldwide uh, to 441. So that, that's, that's cool. They're saying anywhere in the United States, you'll be able to buy a Tesla and get it serviced, which is pretty cool. On my trip down there, I was, I was at the Tesla, Tesla store in Salt Lake City, and there was a Model X waiting to be delivered. That was the first time I really got to see a, a final Model X. I'd seen the prototype before at CES. Uh, I did a live stream there if you want to check it out. A lot of questions and answers about the supercharger and the trip that I usually make from Riverton, Wyoming to Salt Lake and how difficult it is because of lack of superchargers. I also do a sneak peek of a Model X that was getting ready for delivery that you could barely see behind a fence. 
at the event, um, when I arrived in LA, they had a Blue Model X out and I, we were able to get in it and test out all the seats and it was pretty interesting. Uh, I know this is the Model 3 video, but the Model X, I'd never actually been in one before. And it's cool, this is like a little, it's, a, it's the biggest Tesla. It's bigger than the Model S and quite a bit bigger than the Model 3. It had, everything moves on that thing. <laughs> the doors move, um, the seats all move, even the back seats are like, are, are more like front seats. They got all kinds of adjustments on them. When you're moving the back seats forward, the passenger seat and the front seat also move forward. So like if you're sitting in it, it kind of moves forward automatically. It's interesting. <laughs> also got to do a test ride in a Model X in a P90D Ludicrous. It was fast. Um, the Model X, because of the size and the weight, isn't as fast as the Model S. In fact, I would say um, the Ludicrous X didn't feel a whole lot faster than my 85D. So just, it's like a second slower than the equivalent Model S, I, I believe. I may be off a little bit, but it's about the speed. Um, at, the, at the event, when I got there, um, they had hors d'oeuvres and things, and there was about 800 people, mix of press and, and Tesla owners and podcasters and um, the ones who were lucky enough to win. It was all, it was all done through a lottery, really. Uh, so it was a very limited event. It started on time pretty much, which is unusual for Tesla. They had two prototypes available to ride in, and then they had one that was just a shell. It was a red one. It, there was no battery if you looked underneath it. It was kind of an empty Tesla. I did some streaming while waiting in line. Uh, we finally got a ride in it. Very cool. Model 3. I don't know what else to say except for you gotta, you gotta pre-order one now uh, if you want to get one before the turn of the uh, decade. <laughs> it could be a long time because the pre-orders are, are just racking up. The longer you wait to pre-order, the longer you're gonna have to wait to get one delivered. And it's fully refundable, so like you put on a credit card or whatever, if you're desperate for some cash later, you can always just get your refund. Um, there's no charge, you can just refund it at any time. But if you think you're gonna want one in a couple of years, you better pre-order now. Also, you know, if you don't wanna wait, you could get a used Model S for about the price of probably a decked out Model 3 is gonna cost. So that's also an option to look into. Um, also, I guess if you're going to order a Model S, you might want to do it soon because they're going to raise the prices, I believe, of the S and the X to kind of um, differentiate those lines from the Model 3. That's kind of the rumor that the stores have been saying. Well, thank you for all, all letting me ramble on. Uh, please comment below. What do you think of the Model 3? Is, is it worth the 35000 Are you going to pre-order one? Do you think you'd rather just get a Chevy Bolt because you could probably get it a year or two sooner? <laughs> uh, you think there's going to be enough superchargers uh, to handle all these cars? Or is it because of all these cars being pre-ordered, is it going to force other charging networks to build out, which would also be awesome? And then it would support, you know, the Leafs and the Bolts and the, the Kia Souls and all the other EVs that are out there. Please, um, if you like these videos, subscribe. Uh, it lets me know that there's people watching. Um, comment. You can email me. I'm at pox at twosmartguys.com. That's T-O-O, -O, uh, smart guys. <laughs> and I'm at Walking Crow on Twitter. Um, I respond on Twitter as well. Thank you for tuning in. I'm sure I'll have another uh, news update soon. It's the future, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got a, a review coming out on the Two Smart Guys channel of the DJI Phantom 4 drone. So I have a self-driving car and a self-flying drone. And I used my self-driving car to drive itself while having the drone follow and shoot it. So if you've been seeing some of this footage um, in this video, that's how I shot it. And I, I just think it's cool. I mean, this is the future. Welcome to it. Tesla's awesome. See you guys next week. Is this how the display is going to be, or is it going to be more like the S? Uh, this is our plan, yeah. Huh. We found that the, I think the S, the 17-inch vertical works really well in the S. I think having this uh, landscape display actually makes it better for the passenger, and it fits better in the car. It has a similar look to the X when you did the prototype, where it was kind of freestanding like this, and then yeah. you guys went with the version closer to our S. So we were looking at this, and I was going by, wondering if it was going to be freestanding like this. Yeah, it's definitely, um, 
I like it actually. Like, there's <laughs> one thing that it gives you an advantage is there's more screen closer to the driver, True. so you don't need the center display or the, the instrument cluster. So there's no instrument cluster. That's right. There's pockets in the back seat. No way! <laughs> yeah, and the doors. I see potential right here. <laughs> yeah, we really wanted to make the interior experience good because it is a smaller car. We wanted people to be as comfortable as possible. And so you can see how low and forward yeah. the yeah, they don't and have how high the, the glass no. in the back is. You probably have plenty of headroom, I suppose. Uh, yeah, there's pretty yeah. good headroom right here, which is good for me. All right, are you guys uh, at least holding on? Yeah. So is this have the, uh, the drive the MS? Uh, no, this is a Model 3 prototype. It's its own prototype. Yeah. So amazingly... So what was that for the 0 to 60 vote? <laughs> uh, we haven't actually quoted any numbers yet. Um, but suffice it to say, it's fast. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite a Model S. Ludicrous, right? <laughs> so if you want the fastest performance... You don't make anything slow. That's right. You're definitely recognizing the Tesla DNA there. Yeah. So you have plenty of room back there. So that's yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually pretty decent. And you like the glass? I love yeah. the glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's my favorite spot in the car, actually. I prefer sitting back there than yeah. in the front, just because you can see so much. I think I'd miss a sunroof. Mm. But yeah. this, is, this is fantastic. No, I mean, I, I think it's possible we would have a sunroof option. I don't see door handle. Uh, yeah, they're uh, release. Is this they're the there. version? They're just subtle. <laughs> oh, OK. I the... And we're letting these guys open them, but there's a little button on that. Oh, OK. Oh, I see it. This is, so this is the door handle. Yeah, so you just push the button. Right here. 